I can't quit you, Brian Winhorst. Every time I think the off season <laughs> has arrived, I pull Tell you back in. I, shouldn't this be all football talk on this show right now? Are you leaving me alone to have lunch with my wife? <laughs> I appreciate you put the Windhorst love affair on on hold for just a few moments to call in. So, when when did this happen? When did Kyrie say I want out? July seventh. Um, didn't get out for two weeks, which is a remarkable thing in today's NBA. I, I also think that it, it shows that the Cavs weren't really engaging in trade talks because something this big, I wouldn't say we would always get it, but when a player this big is available on the trade market, usually those of us who specialize in this find out and we didn't find out it took and took two weeks so um you know you you played that little thing with that kid from from years ago that Kyrie said that I, I don't need to play pull out a quote that and do gotcha with Kyrie from from four five seven years ago one month ago during the finals eh, maybe six weeks at this point he was talking about the balance that he has to go through about whether he wants to be the centerpiece of a team. You know, he even used the word being selfish and being the number one player on the team or play alongside a great player in LeBron and go for your team greatness. He even said he would rather be on a great team as opposed to being up at three in the morning wondering what the future of his team was going to be. So in the past, I was always aware that Kyrie did want to have more of an independent situation. He, his, his idol is Kobe Bryant. He talked about how he would go into his Mamba mentality. And Mamba mentality would be have your own team. Um, but when, when Kyrie said that a month ago, I thought, you know, he's going to stick this out and wait for this situation to LeBron to end, whether it would end in 2018 or 19 or 20, and then go full Mamba mentality. So I'm surprised. I'm not surprised that Kyrie wants out. I mean, look. Rich, there was a time where you left a high-profile job to go to another <laughs> high-profile job, right? I mean, and some people probably thought you were crazy for doing that, and you've gone on to be successful. Um, so I'm not going to look down at Kyrie. Kyrie has every right to want to do this. I am surprised about the timing because, yes, there are side effects to playing with LeBron. Does he blame you when he makes a mistake defensively? Yeah. Does he subtweet and passive-aggressive you on social media? Yes. Does he have the team sort of bend around his desires with travel and schedule and stuff like that? Yes. True across the board. Is it worth it? Just about everybody he's ever played with or played for would say yes. So this is unusual, but certainly we'll see how Kyrie does in the long term on it. So then let's hit the third rail on the uh, on the reading in between the lines of the piece, Brian. Uh, did LeBron do anything to bring up to the four or to put it in a spot for Kyrie that he just couldn't take anymore sharing the stage with LeBron? It's a wonderful question for Kyrie. I, I, I can explain his thought process because I'm aware of it because he's spoken about it before. I can explain his motivation because of his affinity for how Kobe Bryant operates. I can't explain the timing. That's a question that Kyrie's going to have to answer. And again, a month and a half ago, he was talking about how this arrangement, and he even used, he even said this era. He, he talked about how it was important to, to play for the team in this era. And when he said all that, I, I was under the impression that he was going to continue to suppress what he wanted to continue to stay with this team. So I just, I don't understand the timing. I don't know if something happened between then and now, or if he was just saying something to the media that wasn't true, which is not against the law. Or what? But obviously, that's a great question. I don't know the answer to that one. Brian Winhorst of ESPN, again, uh, part of the uh, crew that brought, broke the news over the weekend that Kyrie Irving has asked to get out of Cleveland. What does Cleveland do right now? Well, they got three choices, Rich. One is they don't have to trade him um, because he's got two years left on his contract. Go back to Kobe with the Lakers in 2007. I can still remember my uh, then coworker Rick Buecher, uh going on and saying Kobe Bryant will never play another game in a Laker uniform. Uh, late, Kobe demanded a trade, but the Lakers had him under contract for years. They they worked through it, and uh, he ended up winning two more championships. That's one option. Option number two is they could look to trade for young pieces and draft picks. This is what typically happens when a star gets traded. The team rebuilds and attempts to you know get. Uh, you know, better for the long term. Look at what the Bulls just did with Jimmy Butler. Similar situation, two years on his contract. 
They got two prospects in the top seven draft picks. Um, or they could trade for veterans. And this is what is a little bit more difficult because the Cavs have LeBron on the last year of his deal. It's not like the Paul George and Jimmy Butler trades where Indiana and Chicago are taking a step back. The Cavs don't want to take a step back, but yet they have the hot potato of LeBron's free agency um, that they have to plan for either direction. So it's going to take some time. And that's why I'm not surprised that two weeks passed and this didn't get out because I think the Cavs are studying trying to figure out what their move is going to be and not wanting to go fast with this very important decision. And then, Brian, this th- this story would have just been huge on its own and then tossing the fact that uh, the Cavs had Paul George basically on the team in a uniform, that they would have been the ones to win the Paul George, if you will, lottery by trading for him in a three-way deal that would have sent Kevin Love to, uh, to Denver. So I ask you the question I asked uh, rhetorically, before you joined in the segment before, and that is, if Paul George had come, would Kyrie have wanted out, saying that he didn't want to play with LeBron anymore? So here's all I hear. Here's I can't say what I, you know, you know, hypothetical. But here's what I can say: the Cavs really thought they were about to trade for Paul George for Kevin Love. The Pacers never thought they were going to agree to that deal. The Pacers would have traded Paul George to the Cavs for Kyrie Irving but the Cavs didn't feel the, the need to offer or they felt that they had to trade Kyrie Irving back then. Those are things that I can say with confidence. You know, I think there, there's another possibility. What if the Cavs had traded um, Kyrie Irving for Chris Paul? If, if Kyrie Irving had made his feelings known, you know, after the season, um, and they could have maybe tried to make, bring Chris Paul in, and instead of him going to Houston, and then maybe they could have used Kevin Love in a separate trade to do something else, whether it was for Paul George, Jimmy Butler, or somebody else. Is that possible? And again, I can't say that's a hypothetical. What I can say is Tyree was frustrated after the season, but he never met with the Cavs to just to tell them how frustrated he was. Could that be because the guy he would have gone to, they, they fired in David Griffin? That's one explanation for it. To, to be honest with you, that's that's an explanation I've been given. Um, but David Griffin wasn't there, and they still made the trade demand. I mean, I if you really want to demand a trade, I think you you know you can call the owner. But what you just said is an explanation that I have been given, not as a hypothetical, but as a reason. Brian Winhorst, a couple more minutes because there's so many more things to talk about. Just based off of these, you know, facts alone, I want to stick with the Paul George for a moment. It seems that the Pacers had better offers, but they were all from Eastern Conference teams, and that is what trumped everything in their in their conversations and strategy about trading Paul George. Is that a fair assessment, Brian? Okay, here's the, here's the gray area. If a team could have traded for Paul George and knew that they were going to be able to keep him, his value was going to be stronger. So – if you're the Pacers and you're talking with the Cavs and they're offering Kevin Love essentially, and it was going to be a three-way trade with Denver where Love would get moved on to Denver. But if, if you were talking with the Pacers and, and the Pacers actually thought that Paul George was probably going to resign to stay with LeBron, then they would have wanted Kyrie Irving because trading Paul George with one year on his contract has certain value. Trading Paul George within the division, somebody they'd have to compete with for long term is different value. And the Pacers felt that had they sent him to Cleveland, there was a good chance he was going to extend and stay with LeBron James. So that made it difficult to work out a trade because the Cavs are making offers that it, we only might have them for one year. So on a one-year rental, mm. we're willing to give X. And, and so that's why it's hard to do this. The other thing is, and this is going to be important with Kyrie going forward, it's extraordinarily hard in the NBA to complete three-team trades. I'm already seeing people posting their three-team trades online like, oh, here's the three-team trade. The Knicks get this, the Heat get this, the Cavs get this. Three, a three-team trade, Rich, is a no-team trade. A four-team trade is a pipe dream. So obviously they happen, but maybe one out of a thousand three-team trade offers happen. And that was a three-team trade offer. It's really, really hard. But be, to get to the bottom line, if the Cavs knew that Kyrie Irving wanted a trade uh, in June, and whether it was Kyrie's position or the Cavs' position, that they didn't know that, 
forget about that. If they knew Kyrie wanted to trade before the draft, this offseason would have looked completely different for the entire NBA because yes. it would have changed the Paul George situation. It would have changed Jimmy Butler. It might have changed Chris Paul. It might have changed the Celtics. A whole bunch of things. So having said that, going forward, we could see a whole bunch of crazy things happen, including the Cavs making a trade. And I'm not saying this is likely, but it's, it's possible. The Cavs making a trade that actually makes them more competitive against the Warriors. Maybe not with a player that's better than Kyrie, but maybe with a, with a team that's more competitive. And maybe this trade that they're about to make keeps LeBron James long term. Maybe it drives them away. But maybe it keeps them, and that's why you got to watch the NBA. Should I should I should I check on my grandmother to see if she has wheels to make her a wagon, Brian? I mean, should I do that now <laughs> after after hearing that last soliloquy right there? I, 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 mean, I don't know. I just here's what I know about the NBA. People keep asking what LeBron's going to do um, in next June, like they all want an answer. I can't tell you what's going to happen in the NBA by 3 p.m. It's incredible. I mean, it's incredible. And I got the commissioner on next hour. He's got to be ecstatic over this. La- last one for you, Brian, real quick. Uh, if I gave you a choice uh, in the 2018-19 season, not next season, but the year after that, who's more likely to be on the Cavs roster, Kyrie, LeBron, or neither? What would you choose? Oh, LeBron's more likely because I think Kyrie's getting traded. This year? You think I- he gets traded this year or next year? I- I- I think Kyrie gets traded before training camp, but that said, the Cavs don't feel any pressure to trade him because even though Kyrie is unhappy and expressed he wants out, and that's bad news, the Cavs hold all the cards. No, He has two years on his contract, and, and he doesn't have a no-trade clause. So the Cavs can wait until February. But I think I don't think Kyrie will – I think they're going to trade him. Brian, apologies to Mrs. Winhorst. Go have that lunch. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Rich. It's Brian Winhorst. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on radio stations across the country and audience. If you like that, please download our app. There's lots of fun things there other than just more of the videos you just saw. You can call us from the app. You can email us from the app. Just download it. Trust me, you'll enjoy it. 